workers paddled up and down them, gathering beaver pelts, setting up trading posts. And in the process, they opened up the country. By excavating old trading posts, archaeologists have been able to get a good idea of what life was like back then. Now, some are looking for new clues underwater. A CBC crew recently joined one group looking for artifacts in the Missinabe River in northern Ontario, a river that was once a major fur trade route. And as the CBC's Evan Solomon reports, it was quite an adventure. Diving at the base of rapids for you know, voyager or even logging, turn of the century artifacts uh, has always been a, a very fascinating possibility for me, the, the chance to get to go and do that. Uh, the story of voyageurs coming down the rapids and dumping in the set of a rapids had to have happened hundreds of times. Well, every time the, one of their laden canoes dumps, then so goes down musket balls and probably guns and probably knives, possibly coins in their pockets. To have a chance to finally dive at the base of rapids and look for lost artifacts, it's just a fascinating opportunity. This is Thunderhouse Falls. You can imagine why they call it that. It's loud here. It symbolizes not just the power and beauty of the river, but the danger of trying to travel along this river. You can imagine in the rapids all along here how often canoes tipped over and artifacts dropped out. Even today, dozens of people have died on the river right here. But what secrets remain under the surface of this river? That's what we're here to find out. This has always been a land only for true survivors, voyageurs, fur traders, First Nations. But in order to find submerged relics from the fur trade on the Missinabe, I knew I needed a modern day survivor. And who better than the man best known as Survivor Man, Les Stroud. We're one of the first few people to get out and actually start to uncover Canada's rich history here on these rivers like the Missinabe. The plan is simple. Paddle for a week down the Missinabe River, stopping to dive at two main rapids where it's thought canoes may have dumped, and also at an old Hudson Bay fort, first built in 1777, but burned down by their rival company, the Northwest Company, and then rebuilt several more times. As we travel out to our start point to look for lost history under the water, we learn that there's a lot of history along this river above the water especially at sacred places like Ferry Point on Missinabe Lake. You come along in your little birch bark, you hop up on the rock, you dry pitch, you get back in your canoe. You go over here, you can't climb on anything, so you stand in your canoe, your buddy holds a paddle, and you paint your little caribou on the rock over there. If you look at them closely, there are all sorts of different caribou, and there's one famous one called the Smiling Jellyfish Man, which no one knows what it is. The pictographs at Ferry Point are located about 20 kilometers from where we'll begin our diving at the fort. It's a place that's been a sacred spot for First Nations people for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years. Back then, black duck shaman and purification rituals would dip their fingers into crushed red ochre pigment and fish oil and apply it to the granite surface. We finally arrive at our first dive site the old Hudson Bay fort called Missinabe House to see if anything there remains. Back in 1777, the Hudson Bay Company decided to build a fort here in an attempt to move inland from James Bay so they could get closer to the First Nations hunters and their beaver pelts. You can probably hear that. Yeah. There, now it ends. There's something long, Ferris. See, there's a potato field and a powder house, Indian house, men's house, trading store, dairy. Dairy. They brought cows, cows in by canoe and raised them here and uh, had milk. Right here. So It's unbelievable. So though. this was a real Hudson Bay fort. Now look at it. So this here 
you know, this is going to be something. What it is, I don't know, I have to unearth history a little more, probably some kind of cellar. Well, we walk the land, Kimberly and Paul do a quick dive survey in the very shallow waters around the fort, and they're amazed to discover so many artifacts. The type of material that we're finding is, is very typical and pretty standard of what you would find at any Hudson's Bay Company post. Things such of, as iron strapping, possibly used for barrels. What's this? Um, we seem to have a bolt here, an iron bolt. People are wondering why you can't pick it up. Like, Les, don't you have this just one? <laughs> yeah, the urge is to pick it up and grab it and show it. Okay. But what, what, what are the, what's, what's the government asking nowadays for, uh, for finds like this, archaeological finds that, that relate to the history that we're talking about, the voyageurs? As far as the finds itself and why we're actually not bringing it up, um, the Ministry of Culture um, for the province of Ontario um, have fairly stringent guidelines on the uh, see, uh, removal or um, touching of any artifacts. This is fascinating domestic. It is. Work. A piece of plate, a broken fragment of plate. All we can do is locate and film. It's Gordon's dry gin. Um, but Gordon's dry gin about a hundred years ago. It's blown glass, and how we can tell that is by the thickness of the glass itself. That just speaks of England and that so Hudson Bay Company. It is so English. Hudson Bay. English manufacturer of both ceramic and glassware, um, which were very basic mercantile objects um, to have. The findings at the fort confirm what we've always suspected, that the river holds pieces of our past. But now it's time to see what we can find in a much more challenging environment, the rapids 10 kilometers north at Quidditchy. Getting to the first dive site to look for artifacts from the fur trade under the water is difficult. Holy heavy bat, man. We have to portage most of the gear around the dangerous rapids, and we get a small sense of what the voyageurs had to do carrying their 90-pound packs. Though carrying scuba tanks in northern Ontario is a first for most of us. Quidagene Rapids. The great canoeist Hap Wilson writes that it's taken more than one life over the years. But Les and I need to run it in order to understand what the fur traders and the Aboriginal people had to paddle through and to see where a canoe might have dumped and where artifacts might have washed out. Okay, gas is on. Did you try your inflator to make sure? Yep. We fill the tanks and suit up. We get the metal detector, the measuring sticks, the underwater sketch boards, the flashlights, and we begin the first ever scuba dive on this part of the Missanabe River. There, come with me. We see this thing underwater, closed. Paul and I we open it up, we're thinking, this is it. Mm. The cache, nothing inside. For now, our only treasure. <laughs> and it's a wallet of all that. Ironically, it's a wallet. <laughs> Finally, we locate something, a handle from an old mug. Kimberly, our marine archaeologist, takes time underwater to measure it and sketch it. She dates the mug from the late fur trade period. We sketched it, measured it, took dimensions of thickness of the ceramic, looked at any other identifying characteristics. There was a, certainly a, a possibility that a tree, there looks to be transferware. It's um, uh, ap leak, basically, of a green tree on this face mm. of this particular ceramic. That is exciting.
The search continues, and soon we make another find. A lot of it's iron. A lot of the actual outside structure is iron. Right. And then these big bolts that you've drawn yeah, there are different right. things. To me, yeah. it, and it, then, it then there's a door like handle. There's that's a right. door handle. There's yeah, a door so handle. probably, mm -hmm. I think it could be a, a hatch from some kind of logging vessel that they were using, that sort of thing. Good. Just remember that the most important thing here is our health and our safety. We need to all be in good physical shape, so take your time, take care of yourselves. From Quidagene Rapid, we have to press on to the next site, Long Rapids, 20 kilometers by canoe downriver. The situation is different here. The visibility underwater is very poor, the current very strong, and the hazards of diving getting hung up on a stick or a log in the current become evident. But we do make one very compelling find, an axe head. Underwater, it's difficult to date. Is it late fur trade or early logging period? We can't lift it up to find out. Metal detector found something. What did you find? Well, Steve first saw it, and then we confirmed with the metal detector, and it looks like an axe head on the bottom. An axe head. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. We found it in about, uh, yeah, 10, 11, 12 feet. Yeah. yeah. We keep searching, but our time is running out. We know that the river beneath us still holds so many secrets left to be uncovered. If not for these rivers, then we would not have at all the history of Canada that we have. The rivers, like the Missinabi River, are completely a huge part of every bit of history that we've got that we can relate to as Canadians. Are we disappointed that we didn't find more? A musket? Some tremendous artifact? Not at all. The evidence we found back at the Hudson Bay Fort, the pieces of those dishes, the old gin bottle, even the piece of the mug or the axe head we found in the rapids, it's all so compelling and makes the past so vivid. But in the end, as Les reminds me, an adventure like this might not even be about finding artifacts at all. The victory in, in being on a quest like this is, is, is like, if not necessarily about you know, grasping that find, it's about the chase, it's about the hunt, it's about the, the, the search itself. And absolutely, when we get into the water and get into the rapids or we go pushing through the bush, um, that search is ridiculously exciting. You don't know what you're going to uncover when you move that rock or lift over that log or peek around that corner. So the victory for me is actually, is, is in, as it always is, is in the search. I think the search never ends. For The National, I'm Evan Solomon. Such a big and amazing country. So much history still to discover. And that's News in Review. Don't forget to check out our website at newsinreview.cbclearning.ca. I'm Carla Robinson. Thanks for watching.